Hello everybody, this is Ryan from I Try Running Programs, and today's video is a review of the Advanced One uh, Hal Higdon Marathon Training Program, uh, which I used this year to train for the 2021 CIM, which is my third running of the California International Marathon, and ultimately led to a relatively large PR, a 45-minute PR, and, and was really, I think, a, a very good program. I'll detail why I think that's the case in this video. I'm going to try to keep this relatively succinct. If you're interested in my view of each individual week, I have videos uh, for basically every week of the program that I completed. I should start this video with a small asterisk that I technically did not complete the program. I ran probably 14 of the 17, 18 weeks that he has in his program. And that just came down to really A, when I started the program and B, taking a vacation near the end of the program. So you can kind of sit back and decide for yourself if I have enough information here to give you a quality review. But I, I do believe that this is an excellent program for somebody in maybe their first to second year of running. So if you're somebody who isn't quite there yet, he has other training programs for you, whether the novice or the intermediate level. Now, a question I've received a couple of times, both from friends and folks leaving me messages, is really what's the difference between the Advanced 1 and the Advanced 2 program? And how it breaks it down pretty simply in that the advanced one program has one day of speed work, the advanced two days of speed work, the advanced two, I should say. I personally don't necessarily agree with how because there are quite a few weeks where you will have a tempo run and a true speed work day. I would still consider a tempo run a speed work day, at least in how I run my tempo runs. So for me, I think it's really the difference between the two programs is the advanced one has somewhere between one to two speed work days per week. And the advanced two program has between two to three speed work days per week. So once again, if you're somebody who's maybe slightly more experienced, you might want that additional speed work. And I think that's really fantastic if you have a bigger base to build from. Now, um, I'll go through some of this information just for those of you who are maybe new to the channel about you know, how how breaks down some of these exercises. I think what's really interesting about his program is that there's not a ton of speed work associated with the long run. And you'll see some other training programs where you'll do a lot of those long runs either at marathon pace or slightly faster than marathon pace, at least portions of the long run. And how really doesn't recommend that. He does have an idea of the three one kind of long run methodology where for every three long runs that you do at just kind of a normal slower pace, you could have one long run where you do a portion of that long run faster. Uh, but he really doesn't recommend going above marathon pace when you do that. So that's just something to keep in the back of your mind compared to maybe other uh, programs. Now he does speed sessions also slightly different than other programs. One, he includes hill repeats, which I think are fantastic if you're running a more rolling marathon type course. Uh, he also does a variety of interval training, um, usually somewhere around the 400 to 800 meter range, most of them being in the 800 meter range, and then also doing a variety of tempo and goal pace runs. Uh, those are incredibly important. I think they help a lot with the psychology of the run. As you're getting into those later miles, if you've been able to, you know, pop off a really great 10 mile goal pace run, you're going to feel a little more confident on race day. And so I think those goal pace runs are fantastic. They were huge for my own psychology when it was getting through that run. Um, but, it, it, you know, ultimately, I think this variety of speed work keeps it from being stale. And that was one of the things I really loved about the program is even though you kind of knew what type of speed work you were going to be doing based on what you had done the prior week beforehand, it was still that rotation of types of speed work that kept it fresh and kept it exciting for each additional week that you were training for. Now, when we kind of get down into how he breaks these runs down, from a long run perspective, the program starts from a 10 mile long run in the first week and tops out with three 20 mile long runs near the back 12, or excuse me, back four weeks from about week 12 onwards. Uh, what I personally found is that the ramp up in mileage, not just in long runs, but just in general week to week mileage was fantastic for the first eight to nine weeks. I didn't have a single overuse injury. My legs didn't feel tired. I felt like I was just making very straight linear progress. When we got more near kind of the 18, 19, 20 mile long runs, that's where I had a few more issues in terms of recovery. 
Uh, but even in Hal's defense, if you were somebody who needed additional recovery, he notates in the plan that you could cut off one or two of the easy runs in a week if you absolutely needed that recovery. So that's something just to keep in mind. Now he notates very importantly that you should run relatively slower uh, than you plan to race, which is I think relatively common knowledge in his particular opinion. He views it as something where you should be running 30 to 90 seconds per mile slower than your intended goal pace. So that gives you a pretty big window in terms of how you want to run. And I, I use that window quite liberally. So if I felt good on a long run, I didn't mind running closer to, to goal pace. If it was going to be a slog of a run, then I didn't mind it because at the end of the day, I was still staying within the window that Hal kind of laid out for the reader. And he did, does notate that some of the best physiological benefits that you can get really happen the longer you're out there running. So the more that your body's used to running for an hour, hour and a half or longer, the better physiological benefits you'll get in terms of being able to, you know, kind of, you know, turn fat to fuel, uh, have different glycogen based responses in your muscles. There's a variety of things that happen by getting your body used to these longer efforts. So in many cases, finishing your long runs incredibly quickly could in some ways be detrimental to your long-term success on race day. And that's something that I think Hal does a relative, relatively good job of explaining in this paragraph here. Now, I, I kind of alluded to this earlier. He has this idea of 3-1 training where, you know, every, you know, kind of fourth long run that you do, you could run the back quarter of the run a little bit faster, faster than an easy pace, but not at goal pace in his recommendation. So for example, if you had a 16 mile long run, the last four miles, you could run a little bit faster than normal. I see some, some benefit to this, both from a, uh, a psychological and a physiological perspective. From a psychological perspective, naturally, if you're running a little bit faster at the end of that run, that should help with a confidence perspective that you can pick up the pace. You know, I think we all kind of hope to, you know, have a, a great second split, you know, that second half of the marathon to be a little bit faster than the first. In this case, this somewhat trains you to do that a little bit. Uh, in my case, that didn't necessarily end up being the case. You can watch my recap video if you're interested how my marathon turned out. Uh, but that would help from that psychological perspective. From a physiological perspective, I do think there's a lot of importance about learning how to run on tired legs. And so if you're running a 20 mile long run and the last five miles, you run a little bit faster than the first 15, that should have some good long-term benefits on your overall cardiovascular system and on the, the response that you get from your training. Um, so that kind of training benefit is also terribly important because you're just getting used to running on tired legs. And it, once again, it kind of, from a circular standpoint, it kicks back into the psychological outcomes and also the physiological outcomes. Both end up becoming better because of that 3-1 training methodology. So I think that's a really interesting way of looking at the long runs is every fourth long run you can view it as almost kind of a mini race for yourself that you're still running slightly slower than goal pace. His hill training is really interesting in that he kind of views them as repeats in and of themselves. He does recommend finding basically somewhere between a quarter mile to a half mile long hill and running those up and down for a per repeat. In my case, I ran my hill training uh, efforts a little bit longer. I looked for a hill that was roughly about a mile and counted each up and back as an interval. He believes that you could have an interval being up and an interval being down. Uh, I felt it was more important to get as much of these hill repeats as possible because CIM rolls quite a bit, and that was important for me. So I changed the hill training a little bit different than what he would do, um, but I think it really it doesn't necessarily matter how you do it. It's just that you do get some hill training in, especially if you are ultimately running a more hilly marathon. But he notates here that even if you're running a more flat course, in many cases, hill training is, is speed work in disguise because you're, you're building your muscles, a, a lot of strength in your legs by getting up a hill and coming down a hill. They're both building your muscles in different ways and they have great uh, physiological benefits to your overall training. Uh, so it's certainly, I'm a big fan of hill training in general. Uh, and I think the way that he does hill training is it's very sensible uh, and, and certainly works in a, a very interval style way. Uh, then, of course, he has more traditional interval training. Some are usually between the 400 to 800 meter repeat range. 
Uh, in his particular perspective, he views it as uh, essentially doing it in a, in a manner where you're running those based on your goal pace. So if you're going to run, for example, a three minute, uh, or not three minute, excuse me, if you're running a three minute marathon, you're, you're breaking records. But if you're going to run a three hour marathon, that you would run uh, your 800 repeats, for example, in three minutes. So this is obviously pretty well known as Yasa repeats. Um, and, and these interval training efforts were good. They it ended up being, in many cases, my favorite form of speed work during the marathon program. Uh, however, I am also a big fan of the tempo runs that he does uh, and recommends as well. And that naturally leads into what the tempo runs are, which generally speaking, he met, recommends running at about a 10K pace. You have a little bit of warm up time, then run that run at that 10K pace and then have some cool down time. They ranged anywhere from about 30 to 45 minutes in this program. And naturally, like most tempo runs, they just allow you to have an, a a time to run above goal pace to help you build some top end speed. And then when we get into cross training, he doesn't schedule cross training. I personally lifted a lot during this program. I lifted somewhere between three to four times a week. And that would include also quite a bit of um, structured uh, core work as well. I truly believe in the, the benefit that weightlifting and core work can provide you really didn't struggle with any side aches. I know that's a very common problem for people, no shin splints, and just didn't find myself suffering from overuse injuries. So for me personally, I wouldn't use weightlifting to replace any of his runs, but you might think about that as an adjunctive to your current running training. I do think cross training has a lot of benefit. And for those of you who are maybe a little bit more into cycling or a little bit more into swimming or hiking, you may replace some of those easier runs with a cross training effort. I personally wouldn't. However, um, it is something that he brings up that you could potentially do. Now, some of the race pace efforts that he does, they're generally relatively short. They're in the five to 10 mile range. So you're never going to run something uh, incredibly long from a race pace perspective. The longest effort you'll probably end up doing in this is a half marathon race. Uh, and I do that in quotations. In my case, I didn't particularly run a scheduled race. I just ran a half marathon time trial near my home. Uh, and that's certainly something that uh, he has scheduled in this. You could race more if you want to, uh, and you certainly could probably use those to replace probably one of your speed sessions during a week. But for me personally, the only race that I did during this was the half marathon time trial. So I could, I could have a general feeling to see how the training stimulus was impacting my top end speed. And so I think that's really a great thing. If you're a little unsure of what your uh, goal marathon pace should be, then that half marathon time trial or a half marathon race is a great way to have a pretty good understanding of what you're going to be doing on race day. And then naturally easy runs. Most of the runs are quite easy in this program. Everything from your long run to the vast majority of the first half of the week are easy runs. So you're doing probably in the neighborhood of five easy runs a week to four to five easy runs. I really should say, because you're running six days a week in this program in general. And then naturally with rest, you know, how notates that you should enjoy your rest and take extra rest if needed. And I think that's relatively sensible. So in terms of the program itself, I'm not going to go by week through week. However, I'll give you the general schema of each week. It starts off with three easy runs uh, pretty much every single week where you'll just do a variety of a short distance, a medium distance, and then another short distance run. And that mileage tacks on as you progress through the program. Then on Thursday, you do some form of uh, interval or speed session of some kind. Uh, and generally speaking, you can see the style here. So it goes hill workout, then a tempo run, then interval training, and then rinse and repeat. And you just do that over and over and over again in those three uh, varieties until you get to the end of the program. Then you have a rest day. Then generally speaking, you have either a goal pace run or an easy run. And then you follow that with a long run that uh, progresses over the course of the program. So you can see even by week eight, you go from a 10 mile long run all the way to a 17 mile long run. You have your time trial for the half marathon in the middle of the program. And then you have three 20 mile runs interspersed with 12 mile runs in the back half of the program. So the back half of the program, in my opinion, ramps up in mileage pretty quickly. The first 
I would say really up until the half marathon, I found to be a very easy progression. I had really no issues during those first nine weeks. In the back half, I did find that I had some overuse issues, a little bit of runner's knee, um, a little bit of foot discomfort to kind of a plantar fasciitis type thing. But that could have been anything from shoes to um, just overdoing it. Because the one thing that I will say in my personal running of this program, I found that for the goal pace and the tempo runs, I ran those way too fast. In many cases, running those above uh, the actual goal pace that I should have set, which would have been probably about 7.15 per mile is what I really wanted to run on race day. And a lot of these runs, if you go and you kind of cycle through my Strava, a lot of these runs I was doing in the mid six range or even high sixes, in some cases, even low sixes. So mileage, um, that was run way too fast. So that was not Hal's fault. It was really my fault. Now, in terms of the outcome in and of itself with this program, I will say that just personal opinion wise, this is probably the best structured program that I've run. And that's not necessarily necessarily saying a ton because I haven't run a lot of structured programs in the past where I've given up on them very quickly. But I will say with Hal's plan, because the mileage is quite low, you really are topping out somewhere around 50 to 60 miles in the biggest week. Most people who are running somewhere between 30 to 40 miles per week already, this program is going to be very sustainable and very easy for you to complete because there's just not enough speed work there and there's not enough huge mileage runs to really overdo your system, in my opinion, if you're following his recommendations for pacing. So in terms of can I recommend this program? Absolutely. With the caveat that you are somebody who's probably been running A for about a year to have consistently come in with a base building phase. I came in running 30 to 40 miles per week, most weeks for about seven months. I did a huge base build up to this program for basically seven months. I was doing nothing but easy running in the six to eight mile range per run. So I think if you come into this program with a nice base, you use this to fine tune what you're currently doing. You should be very successful with this program. However, uh, if you overdo the speed sessions, and this would be true of any program, but I think it's very easy to do with Howell's program because the runs are a lot of fun. The way he breaks them up, they're a lot of fun to do those speedy sessions because you're getting, you're seeing very linear progression. And so then you want to run them faster and you have to be very careful. So you, in other words, if you're going to run this program, not only do you need a good base, but you need a lot of self-control to run them in a controlled, sensible manner as in the way that he describes and recommends. So overall, in my personal opinion, if I was going to give this a, a 10 out of 10 score um, or on a 10 scale, I should say, I would say that this program is probably somewhere between a seven to an eight. And the reason being is that the mileage is sensible. The runs are generally fun. This is a fun program to run. However, I do think the mileage is a little low to consider itself an advanced program. And I do think that near the end of it, it can feel like a stiff ramp up because the first eight to nine weeks don't feel that hard. And overall, once again, for me, for my personal outcome, this helped me progress from a 410 marathon to a 326 marathon. Uh, so that was a huge improvement for me. I consider doing the advanced two program. However, I will be doing a different program and I'll detail that later on my uh, channel in a different video. Uh, but once again, I do think this is an excellent program for those who are looking to make a, a sizable jump in their PR and have the base to do so. So I hope that was helpful in terms of potentially selecting this as a training program for your next upcoming marathon. And I wish you all the best in your training. Take care.